things we hoped to achieve with the Children's Council was to create a year-round practice whereby the ARC would be constantly engaging with the same cohort of children. Children who would see all of our work, become very comfortable and expert in seeing that work, thinking about it, reflecting on it, and who through that process would be able to inform us as to what we might do and present and make for children in the future. There's a constant influx of different children coming through the doors every day, they're doing different programmes, they're coming to see different shows. The fact that we have a steering group of 30 young people from different parts of Dublin, from different walks of life, that are a constant throughout the year, it just means that we have a little bit more focus in how we learn about what we do ourselves. Fundamentally, we, we are not children in 2019, so having a team of children to advise us, to engage with our programme and to feedback of what we're doing, what we can do better, is vital. It's important for children to have a voice and it not just to be the adult's decision to do everything because kids have equally good ideas or even better and sometimes they're not always heard. It's a really good idea to get children involved because if children aren't involved they don't really know they have a space to sort of contribute their ideas and opinions. Who is it for? It's for children so they might see something that an adult wouldn't see. Children are going to the shows so it's good that we can have a say on what children like and what would be good for them. So it gives children a voice when adults would be making most decisions and it shows them that children think as well and they have opinions. To know what their needs are wants are, you know, uh, what they get out of it and what they enjoy. They're treated as equals really here. They're actually being asked for their input, what their views are, on the basis that they have things to say and they have knowledge and wisdom to contribute. The council this year is 34 children who come from all over Dublin and beyond. We have a wide range of ways of encouraging as many children as possible to apply. Some of them are members of neighbouring schools of the ARC. Some of them come through a public application process. Through the Children's Council, the ARC can test temperature. If we didn't have a Children's Council in the building, we run the risk of satisfying our own needs as opposed to the needs of the people that we want to get in the seats. Robin comes approximately once a month up to join her friends here in the Ark. They go to various cultural events. There's theatre, music, they've made video and she will actually get out of bed willingly on a Saturday morning. We live um, on the outskirts of Dublin so it is a commitment but absolutely for Kieran, he was very focused that he wanted to be involved and engaged in all of the programmes the we travel down from Donegal every month and Zoe's so interested in coming down here that I couldn't possibly not come down. You know, she always looks forward to it. Even here today she had the choice of going with her young aunties to go around shopping and she decided to stay here with her friends. We have the calendar and we know when it's Arc Day and nobody if it's another activity like football or birthday party or anything like that, they said no, the Arc goes first. We started the Children's Council in March 2016 as a pilot project. We had 15 children with us and we learned a lot about how to run a council in a busy cultural centre for children. We quickly decided that we wanted to expand the numbers and expand the reach of the council. We have been involved in the Children's Council right from the beginning. So this year, it's our third year being involved. We have been more involved with more children as the project has grown. And each year we've developed a process whereby we can be as demographically representative as possible and have a balance in various directions. We developed an idea of recruitment workshops where we play team building and intercommunication into personal exercises. These workshops are an opportunity to see how people work together, asking the children, is this something you'd be genuinely interested in, is it not something your parents want you to do? Over year two and year three, our numbers have doubled, but also the diversity within the room has really, really changed. And I think that has led to a better representation of young people in the country. I got the opportunity to see a lot more people when I was on the council than I did before. I met people that had the same interests as me and I made really good friends. The mix around the groups means that nobody gets too comfortable and they get the opportunity to mix, make new friends. I made loads of friends. We were all from different areas. I'm texting them. We're going to meet up to 
go to one of the shows here soon. When they interact with different children from different backgrounds, they learn to be themselves. They make friends with young people that are from different parts of the city, but also they get access to a lot of work for free, which is extremely useful if you're from an area or a family perhaps where there isn't a strong cultural tradition. The children are exposed to very rich opportunities to be creative and imaginative and to express themselves. Children are allowed to take the lead in the activities and they're given encouragement and they're provided with the equipment to do that. They see everything we do, so they see all of our shows, participate in all of our workshops and all of that is supported by the monthly meeting led by John Dunn and supported by the ARC team and the idea behind that is to really create a shared language for how to talk about art. And beneath all of that is a rights respecting practice which really goes back to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, in particular Article 31 which informed the founding of the ARC, but also Article 12 which is all about the voice of the child. Every day I'd warm them up utilise in particular exercises that encourage feedback or encourage strategy exercises that I feel can help them lean into that side of their thinking. There's technical metaphors within those exercises that help them work together, feeding back on the policies of the building. Come in, come in, straight into our circle, find your space. Come in on a Saturday morning, just experience new things, do all different workshops and like see different shows. Give them feedback on what you thought about it. It was nice to see like how the artists felt and what they were thinking, making like the pieces they made. We learnt a lot from them and what had inspired them and how they'd done it. We want them to have an understanding of what we do so that understanding comes with time. They have to kind of experience the building and understand what happens and in that way then when they feed back or when they're given an opinion, the opinion is more meaningful. She just feels listened to. That was what Robin was looking forward to most, was the fact that somebody was going to listen to her, that she was going to have an opinion that meant something and that was valid. If there's a show coming up, you've got a test bed there for it. At one stage last year there was some artists who were part of a European project working with the council. If you're trying to actually access a group of young people who are going to be able to talk to you and give you feedback. You've got a ready-made monthly meeting focus group. I'm constantly thrilled and gratified with the attention and detail that these children bring to their viewing, to their responses, to their discussions, how comfortable they are with artists and how practiced they are at talking about work. They're well able for everything that we give them and the difficulty is just not giving them enough. We signed up to be on the council knowing that there'd be a bit of drama and that also we were required to be given the feedback, like that's our job. Really nice and happy at the start when you're like walking around and you're making paper crowns and it's like yay, joy! I love like the way they use the instruments to make all the different sound effects. And it also looked good for like the set and the setting that they were in. So it could get really awkward when people were asking the questions. It's kind of hard to follow and um, I found that I couldn't really hear them very well. Maybe children in seven would have found it a bit hard to follow. It was very interesting and very moving. We practiced them kind of flexing their opinion muscle through the art that they engage with. But actually, our main goal is definitely wider than that, and it definitely has a louder political dimension. You're looking to create a sense of active citizenship within the group to enable them to be very assertive about how they feel about life and how they feel about society. A space where they can feel critical of the things that are happening around them, and that they know that they have a right to give that opinion and have their voice heard in that way. They get an opportunity to be independent thinkers and uh, get a broader view of the world around them. They're actually teasing out what do these mean at an emotional level, at a, at a societal level. I mean, so it's given them definitely that voice where they can express it. The work in and around why the arts is so important for children was really useful for him because he hadn't really thought about those aspects before. It's really amazing. They really want all of the arts and stuff to be accessible for every child. They, they would have had discussions about children living a direct provision with children dealing with homelessness looking at it's not just about your voice it's about 
children and young people around the country who are disenfranchised. There's a political dimension, the work that they're doing, whether it was reaching out to other young people around the country and asking them to give an input or going up to the doll. Going to see the tea shop that was really fun. I got to miss a day of school and we got to go to the Leinster House. Everyone in Ireland could have a question and we were picking them out. So we were really representing lots of people from around the country. Children's Council have become collaborators with other arts organisations. So for example, our Children's Council form the Children's Jury for the fantastic Flix strand of Dublin Film Festival. The Council have also been able to contribute to the Arts Council's strategy. We're picking up partners as we go, so things are becoming traditions. We started with the film on Universal Children's Day. Now we have a work in progress festival. There's going to be a festival that's for young people, by young people this year too. So the engagements are getting bigger and getting more profound as the Council becomes a bigger vessel for all this work. I mean, Colin has been part of the film jury and he was saying they were watching a Norwegian film about kids like kind of forming a band and you're kind of, I don't think I've seen it. Have I seen a Norwegian film? Maybe I have, but like definitely not when I was 11. I definitely see the work that's put into it, especially if I go and see some sort of festival, because we did our own festival and it's a lot of hard work. One well, of my favourite experiences was doing the Still Loading Festival, a recent festival of new work, children responding to that and some of that work ultimately becoming part of the arts artistic programme. It's lovely to see a lot of work in progress. The idea that they're taking on the children's voice and their thought process and the ideas that the children have to go into the production and the finishing of pieces, it's really important. that We've now had a number of councils who've contributed to discussions and developments around individual pieces of work. In the case of one recent play, Pete by Kate Heffernan, children have been involved at all sorts of different stages of its development. One of the things that we'll discover in the next few years is whether it can inform not just the work that is being made but the kind of work that's being made. One of the core principles of the council is that this group not only engages and responds to the programme but influence our decision making. But what's very important and we're getting better at it each year I feel is talking about the longer term impact. How do we create a feedback loop? How do we deal with that feedback? Who gets it? How do we manage that? And also how do we report that feedback back to the council? We're going to get ready to go to the show now. Activities in the art help the children develop a better sense of themselves, builds their resilience, they have a more positive attitude towards learning, they are happier in school. It's amazing the way they learn so many skills in the art. The communication the skills that they get, they are not afraid to express themselves. Everyone was really nice and they never judged you on what you said. I'm a lot more confident, things that I wouldn't usually go for in the school I'm doing now. Um, thanks to having a safe place to just sort of speak out loud, engage with others and to share opinions. Like you didn't feel like you'd be judged if you said anything wrong. Definitely self-confidence, the way of looking at things, making their choices, yeah. looking for information and yeah. expressing themselves as well. How do you measure? self-confidence, assuredness and that idea as to where you see yourself in the world and in, in your community, the way that everyone worked with them. They always felt you should be putting your hand up, you should have something to say, you should be making your voice heard. I'm more confident. I've gotten more into an interest in art and it built more confidence. I feel more confident in talking in front of people and would volunteer for more stuff. She's definitely more willing to stand up and tell people what she thinks or tell us at home what she thinks. I just find it's great for her personal development. She's a lot more sociable. It's easier for her communicating with me. Uh, she is able to discuss what she has done. Normally she doesn't normally. She lives fairly much in her head and now she's talking that she wants to be an actress where she hasn't ever been talking about stuff like that before. He's more mature. His public speaking is more mature. He's more confident. He's more able to verbalise more about cultural and economic issues that really helped his understanding of how important the arts are for our society as a whole. We give them a sense of art and culture as 
a part of how you live. So I'm hoping that when we look back on the groups that we've had over the few years, we'll be seeing that they've created space for themselves to continue on seeing work and engaging with buildings like this, even when they grow out of the air. In the long term, it would just be encouraging to us if it gave them a really clear sense of the value of their voice. And I would hope that that would inform them of their right to be heard in the future. I'm so sad that they can't keep going, you know, for, for years and years, years and years, because it's such a positive experience all together and they, they learn so much from it. Just lots of new things coming into the house, new ideas, new experiences, new friends. Overall, very positive experience. Learning to become more confident and more open. You sort of just grow as a person. It just helped me all around to make me a better person. I hope that in the future children's influence will be even more evident, not just in the programming, but also in the generation of new work, which itself, through its processes, really amplifies the voice of the child in all of its guises. Yeah.